All right, if I can have everybody's attention, please. We'd like to start the program first with the City of Pikeville Color Guard presenting the colors. We would ask for Commissioner Gene Davis to come and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Don. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we would invite Tara Buckley to the state for the singing of the national anthem. Tara. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land Next, we invite Barry Cheney to the stand for prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the prosperity and opportunities of the past that you have given us. Lord, we come to you today, and we thank you, Father, for this new opportunity, these new jobs that are coming, all the things that will come with this project father lord we would ask that you would bless us that your hand would be with us lord we would ask that you continue to watch over us lord we thank you for all your goodness and all your mercy in jesus name we pray amen Okay, great. Well, first of all, thank everybody for coming today. Uh, this is a proud occasion, one that we waited for for some time. Uh, 
before that I get started, uh, just to recognize a couple of folks that I see in the audience. Uh, we appreciate our elected and appointed officials uh, for attending today's event. And also, I saw uh, Lonnie Osborne and Keith Hall. Keith, appreciate you coming today. We've got Sandy Runyon with the Ad District and Jared Arnett with the uh, Ad. I'm sorry, with the Chamber. You can be with the ad too, Jared. And also, uh, again, another uh, round of applause. I was uh, very pleased to not only be able to set this program today, but the uh, rendition of the national anthem was sung by my niece, Tara Buckley. So I'm extremely proud of her today and uh, glad to have her part of this program. Thank you, Tara. <clears throat> now with the program. For the past 10 years, I've had the privilege of serving my hometown as city manager. In that time, we have seen our community grow leaps and bounds and our landscape forever change for the better. Our town has been recognized throughout the state as one of the most progressive. We have received many awards, numerous accolades, and several publications have been written about our success. This did not happen just by chance. This happened because of the vision, planning, right personnel, and teamwork of the five men who I'm proud to call my friends the Pikeville City Commissioners. In today's political climate, this commission is unlike most you hear or read about. Though they are poli in politics, they are not like most politicians. They are not here about the headlines, they are not self-serving, they are not partisan, and at this commission's salary of only $3,000 a year, they are certainly not here about the money or perks. They serve because of the love of their community. They simply wish for their moms, dads, spouses, sons, daughters, family, and friends to enjoy the quality of life they, they, they deserve without having to travel outside their community to experience it. In late 2004, the commission sat around a table and decided to implement a new commission plan. We needed a plan to address creating need for services to make Pikeville the regional service for destination or in order for our people to stay at home. This commission spoke at, spoke at length on how our own people have to leave the area and travel for various services. They work with our folks <clears throat> here and to making sure that they do not have to travel to, into outside the area to support other communities' economy. They watch the mountain parkway filled with vehicles heading to Lexington for, ex for experiences such as entertainment, shopping, or simply to eat out. They watch our people travel for their health care and higher education needs as well. The new comprehensive plan had to address these issues while we needed to concentrate on making policy changes, partner with various other private and nonprofit businesses, and working with our state and federal representatives. We released and adopted our comprehensive plan in April of 2005 and then went to work. The commission restructured almost every department in the city. They annexed territory for growth and invested in the major infrastructure needs. They adopted a culture of change, and our community bought in, and change happened. With the help of our legislators, we also pursued and were awarded various state and federal grants for many projects that benefited our town. We started to rebuild our city with new ideals, new services, and new infrastructure in order to support our new growth. This commission thinks outside the box and has made drastic changes. They improved our park system, launched a city, a city tourism commission with new initiatives, they partnered with the university, the hospital, to assist them with their funding needs so they too could expand. They worked with several developers to bring new business and housing. They partnered with nonprofit to open facilities such as West Care's Homeless Shelter, Pikeville Scholar House, U Pike Business College, and Jenny Wally Drama Association with the new theater downtown. They partnered with private businesses such as H&W Management to bring two national hotels downtown and with Kentucky-based Texas Roadhouse to build a national chain restaurant in the city. The commission most recently announced announcement generated by, by $1.5 million in state and federal grants is to bring commercial air service to our region starting in March of next year is yet another milestone. Our partnership with the Southeast Chamber of Commerce and the Pikeville Pike County Airport Board shows another example that by working together we can achieve the impossible. This is just a small sample of numerous projects that this city commission has been directly tied to and committed to in order to service the good people of Eastern Kentucky. With, the federal with this federal administration's war on coal, it is more important now than ever before that we find ways to diversify our economy, 
open ourselves up to trade opportunities, all while improving the life for those that we serve. Though we cannot set federal policy, we still have a responsibility to use the tools that we have in order to hopes of planning and creating a better tomorrow. The past 10 years of planning and investing in various infrastructure projects has positioned us for this opportunity. The Commission will continue to make this happen. Today's groundbreaking event is another example of a great investment for our community. The past seven years of planning, investing, and promoting has brought yet another important project to this great city. Our partnership with Realty Link creates a development that will bring new national brand name stores to our retail area. These stores represent stability and selection. The name brands will be revealed today will not only service our community, but will also pull from outlining communities, bringing new business into our city, county, and region. The trend is now being reversed. Instead of our citizens traveling, we're seeing outlining communities travel to Pikeville for their entertainment, educational, and medical needs. With new selection in tourism events, hotels, restaurants, and now this new retail development shopping complex, people are visiting and spending with our businesses, which was our intent. I want to thank everybody for coming out today to celebrate this important event with, this, with, with our community. With these new national brand stores, will not only bring product selection and great savings, but also will provide an estimated 400 to 600 new jobs, new tax base, 200 new apartments, and a better quality of lives for those that we were elected to serve. Again, thank for your attending and celebrating another successful event for our great town. With that said, as I said, this is a milestone as well. Growing up in this community, I remember standing in this very field some 20 years ago and playing softball with the friends of mine when I worked at Lowe's. I remember flying my airplane down where the old airstrip used to be, crossing the Poly Bridge to visit friends, and then uh, coming back home when I moved away for 10 years while working with Lowe's to help set up the new Lowe's store for the first retail facility as part of this retail development. Today represents quality of life and improving not only the need for creating an, an, an economy and the selection, but as mentioned, the keeping people home. The Commission has worked hard to do that. Over the past couple of years, I've spent working with my new friend, who I'll introduce here in a moment, in the planning of what we're getting ready to unveil today. It took a lot of work to get here. Everything from a $5.5 million road project that this Commission uh, represented and, and participated and, and helped to build, and providing a, a $350,000 waterline project that runs through this property. It's a $570,000 sewer line that runs over Likens Creek to bring sewer to this area. The tree removal process, it took about $100,000 to do to open ourselves up so that the folks traveling on 23 could see this development. And putting all that together and marketing a piece to bring a national retailer or somebody into our community that would believe in us as we believe in ourselves was quite a task. I remember driving to Lexington some years ago and meeting with, uh, unfortunately, I'll, I'll, I'll set the stage here before we get to this, but meeting with a representative from Coles who unfortunately was unable to come as part of this development. But as I met with the vice president of the real estate department and we talked about Pikeville, he bought in. And he said, Donovan, I want to share with you one of my premier builders that builds for Coles. I want to introduce him to your market. And I want him to come up. I want him to look to see if it's something that's sustainable and suitable. That was my first introduction with Neil Wilson, who I'll introduce in a moment. Neil came, toured the market, spent quality time with him, spoke numbers, talked to him a lot about the people. And Neil really became one of us. He bought into Pikeville. Traveling from South Carolina numerous times, the development plan that you see here beside us was again three years of hard labor and hard work. But Neil understood the importance of also community, coming from a rural community himself. Looking at the boat ramp and the tourism initiative that we created, it wanted a way to make sure that the city was able to stay in business. So the, uh, the numerous contracts that the city attorney and, and I worked with with Neil ensured that the boat, things like the boat ramp would stay in place. The commission also uh, commissioned a comprehensive plan and also a feasibility study in order to look at ways of serving the housing needs. So when we talked about the reform of, of this project, we also talked about ways that we could serve creating new housing opportunities. So as part of this project, 
in phase two became 200 apart, actually it was 68 apartments originally, and then closer to 200 apartments. Neil worked with a local realtor, realtor, Shirley Blackburn with AAA Realty, who has promoted these departments for the past several months, has had an unbelievable uh, interest with a lot of folks already pre-registering to try to try to, to land one of these great apartments where you can eat and shop and walk and enjoy a lot of the, what uh, the good Lord has given us with all this beauty around us. So if it wasn't for the hard work of a lot of other folks that before I sit down, I want to thank to make this project happen. But through the leader and, 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 and the vision of the commission is, who I've already recognized, but also for Jody Lowe, the, uh, who's with the United States Postal Service. Jody is based out of North Carolina, but I've spent the last two years dealing with him also in trying to make this project a reality because one of the things that they said never could be done, we were able to do it, which was to actually acquire a post office. But also, in order to make that happen, it took the friendship of, of Hal Rogers, uh, who made several calls in Washington with the post office, the postmaster general, personally, to ensure the importance, that he understood the importance of this project and moving this project forward. I also want to thank my dear friend who's sitting up here on stage now, uh, Ray Jones. Uh, Leslie Combs couldn't be here with us tonight. Uh, because she had a, uh, a, a meeting out of town. But she sends her congratulations and, and uh, appreciation for the commission and the city for this project. But uh, Ray and Leslie uh, went to work for us in Frankfurt numerous times uh, to bring money home, Ray, to help us do the Thompson's Road project, to help us with the infrastructure that's been laid here today. Texas Roadhouse was a million dollar project to put the street in and to bring the infrastructure to the building Again, through the hard work of people like Ray Jones, who we greatly value what he does for us in Frankfurt, but more importantly, his friendship. So, Ray, we appreciate you. So with all this said, again, we welcome you, and uh, soon we'll unveil the, uh, the new names and new brands will be coming to this community. First uh, person I'd like to introduce again to the, to, and bring to the podium, uh, known for a long time, but 10 years ago, I sat in, a, in an interview room uh, for this position, and uh, this gentleman at the head of the table, I uh, knew Mayor Frank Justice before, but uh, over the past several years, he's become one of my true and, and dearest uh, friends. So uh, the vision of, of uh, Mayor Justice is I would put up against any uh, community in the, in the state of Kentucky. I appreciate his vision. I appreciate his, uh, his leadership and all the hard work and, and the many hats that he wears in our community as well. So with that said, we bring Mayor Frank Justice to the podium. We've got a little joke around the city, and uh, as Donovan was delivering that, Jimmy Carter just snuck into my ear and said, and you didn't vote for him for city manager. I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> He's done great. We love him. Today is a day that we have looked forward to with much anticipation. It helps in solidifying Pikeville as not only a financial, educational, medical, and judicial center, but a retail area as well. An economist at the University of Kentucky had a hard time describing our community. Simply called it unique. Several individuals have worked to make it so unique. And this day would not be complete if we did not recognize a few of them. Certainly, it began with a physician, Bible Mayor Doc Hamley, that had several dreams. One was working with Congressman Perkins. They were able to pull 26 government agencies together in order to develop the cut-through project. That resulted in flood control while developing the land that we built our town on. Governor Paul Patton and Hal Rogers worked to bring in infrastructure in the form of highways into our community. They completed US 23, Route 80, 119, and the work will soon complete 460 in the near future. Our state representatives, Senator Ray Jones, Representatives Leslie Combs, Representatives Keith Hall, worked hand in hand with Governor Patton and Fletcher and pushing these projects through. 
Furthermore, they worked hard for local infrastructure, such as Thompson's Road Development Phase 1 that Donovan just mentioned, and soon to be released Phase 2. They have delivered in a timely fashion sewage and water to the projects that we have just newly annexed. Lobbyists Leonard Lawson, Greg May, and our own city manager Donovan Blackburn were relentless in the pursuit of seeking funds. Certainly there is others, too numerous to mention, that work diligently together to fill the needs of this community. The infrastructure that they delivered has made Pyville the true gateway of the mountains, thus allowing this community to do business with West Virginia, Virginia, and beyond. Our service area encompasses over 250,000 individuals that are capable of doing business here. Thus alleviating the need for travel for those individuals to such destinations as Lexington, Charleston, Huntington, and the Tri-City area. Having said all this, what this project means to our area, service area is a local alternative to meet the retail needs. Furthermore, we still have several areas of retail land that will be more readily accessible once Thompson Road Phase 2 is complete in the near future. So even though we welcome Neil Wilson and the Powell Commons retail area to our community, much work is yet to be completed. Commercial air service needs to get off the ground, so to speak. Thompson Road Phase 3 needs to be designed and funded, thus opening several hundred acres of flat land within a half a mile of where we are standing today. The road needs to be completed to the Marion Branch Project which is 400 level acres that already has sewage and water, thanks to our representatives. I don't think I need to remind our legislators also that we have a $21 million sewer plant that needs to be completed now, thus allowing our continued increase in growth. Not mean to be redundant, but we welcome Neil to our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. The uh, next person that we invite to the podium, again, I, I mentioned a moment ago, was a great friend to the community. And uh, Ray, I don't know if you just caught the last of the mayor's uh, speech there about the $21 million, but I just want to <laughs> throw that out there again. So, uh, Senator Ray Jones. Uh, we probably need to get somebody from UMG to go get my checkbook out of the car back here. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's an honor to be here today. Uh, and I'm very proud of representing this community and it's been a humbling experience and I look around the crowd and I see folks who are not just from Pikeville here you know, there's people from over in Pond Creek and I see folks from Johns Creek uh, Shelby Creek you know, there's folks from pretty much Robinson Creek back here I see hold your hand up Murray uh, and you know the amazing thing is if you look back this is my I'll be starting my 14th year in the state Senate in January. And I truly believe if you look back uh, over those 14 years and look at the transformation that we've made in this community, but not only this community, throughout all of Pike County, I think it's pretty remarkable. Because if you look at some of the other cities in eastern Kentucky, you don't see this type of growth. You don't see this type of transformation. And Donovan touched on some of the things that are unique about our community. Wednesday night, I had to go to Lawrence County for a uh, political function, since Lawrence County is now part of the 31st Senate District. And uh, I met an ambulance in Floyd County. It was a painful ambulance service ambulance that was coming toward Pikeville. Now, not too many years ago, when you saw an ambulance from Paints or Pikeville or Prestonsburg, it was on the Mountain Parkway, or it was headed north to Ashland. Well, we have turned Pikeville into a hub for health care, for education, for banking. And now we're going to turn it into a regional hub for retail. Because we are facing some very difficult challenges. And a lot of the projects that we've talked about today were funded with coal severance tax. Where our coal severance tax receipts are down about 50%. And that's going to put in jeopardy a lot of the projects that we have on the drawing board, things like Marion's Branch. Uh, but we have to continue to work to create 
a regional economic hub here in Pikeville. Now, most of you know I'm from Virgie. Uh, I didn't grow up in the city of Pikeville. My wife's from Johns Creek. And sometimes we hear folks want to play this city-county issue. Well, let me tell you something. What's good for Pikeville is good for not only Pike County, but it's good for all of eastern Kentucky. And a few years ago, if you remember all the controversy over the Expo Center, most of you remember that. Well, I think most people would say that the Expo Center has made a significant impact on this entire region, not only for entertainment, but for athletics. And it's given us an opportunity to give our high school athletes and our students opportunities here that we could never have imagined when I was uh, younger. Now, as we move forward, I think Mr. Willis is going to come to realize that this is the most progressive city in eastern Kentucky. And I want to close by thanking Mayor Justice and the members of the commission. Uh, Mayor Justice has been a true friend, and we have always been able to work together. And I think that the cooperation is evident. Drive down through downtown Pike. You know, 10 years ago, you had power lines everywhere, power poles everywhere. You had dilapidated buildings. You know, we worked for the Main Street program. We worked, you know, with the new Hall of Justice. We've completely transformed downtown Pikeville, the Expo Center and the opportunities it's created. And, you know, one of the things I'm proud of, probably the most proud of, is 90, about 98% of the people in this county have access to public water. That's unheard of, 98%. We have a lot of work to do. Some of the areas that still don't have water are very expensive projects, and hopefully we'll see an upswing in the coal economy. But it's a privilege to be here today. I want to thank Donovan and all the members of the commission uh, for being here today. I want to thank all of you for being here today because it signifies looking at a crowd like this on a, on a chilly, uh, cloudy day, this shows how important this project is to this community. And it's just another step to move our community forward. And, uh, you know, I'm raising two children here, and I hope that we will have the opportunity to create more jobs, to create more educational opportunities here, so that when they graduate from high school, when they go to college, that they don't have to leave. You know, one of the biggest problems we've had in this region is what some people refer to as a brain drain. Our best and brightest go away to college, and they don't come back. I have two cousins who are physicians. They went away to medical school, and they didn't move back. And it's happened in probably some of your families as well. The key is to keep our best and brightest here. And this project will raise the quality of life for the people of this region. It will create an opportunity for new jobs, new infrastructure, and it will hopefully be a step forward in keeping our best and brightest at home. Thank you all. Thank you, Senator. <clears throat> the uh, next person I'd like to invite to this podium is our uh, keynote. As I made mention a moment ago, I uh, had the opportunity of working with uh, Neil Wilson for the last couple of years. Uh, Neil's out of Greenville, South Carolina. I'm going to let him talk a little bit about his, his uh, company and who he is, so I don't want to steal any of his thunder. But what I found to uh, be true with Neil is, is that he's a man of integrity. Uh, he's a very hardworking individual. And he's got great vision, obviously, seeing uh, the opportunity uh, here in the city of Pikeville. So we welcome Neil to our community as a friend and, and one of us, and we look forward to his, uh, his investment and in, in his venture for the years to come. I present Neil Wilson. Good morning. It's had a, quite an amazing day for this town. I'm very proud to be part of it. I'm just going to keep everything sort of brief. I'm going to touch on probably three or four different items, uh, myself, the company, uh, Pikeville, and then finally, of course, uh, the project, which is why we're all here today. Uh, Donovan's right. I'm from a small town right outside of Greenville. Uh, I wasn't born with a silver, silver shovel in my hand. Uh, six, uh, six members of the family, four kids, and we had two bedrooms, so four kids and, and a single bedroom. Um, Went in business with my brother. Uh, he's a twin, and we've been in business ever since. Sort of joined at the hip. Dad said, always be nice. You, you meet people twice, and we took that, and with a lot of hard work, we started Realty Link in 1998. 
Started off uh, first year, I think we did about 5,000 square feet of retail, sort of a humble beginning. Uh, this year we'll start about a million square feet of retail. And uh, it still goes back to doing what you say you're going to do, uh, working hard, getting up, making the phone calls, even the ones you don't want to make, uh, giving people good news like today, giving people bad news when it stuff doesn't happen. you got to have a little bit of a uh, self-starter type personality to be able to get up every day and drive to Pikeville and spend a weekend in Pikeville and try to figure out what makes this town click. Um, and we did that uh, several times. Went to church on, I think it was Second Baptist Church one Sunday, just to see, you know, what that was about. And uh, it's, it's very, we're very blessed to be in this environment with a town working with Pikeville. Uh, Realty Link as a company, we're 15 years old. Um, we almost didn't make it like a lot of companies in 2009, when 2008, 2009, when a storm hit. Uh, we had a lot of projects, I guess 30 or so that was uh, that we had closed on that was under different forms of construction. We had 17 different lenders. Um, every lender at that time was pulling commercial loans and putting every developer into a bucket and saying that you're toxic and you're not a you're not going to make it so therefore we're just going to foreclose on your property and move on. So we had to go to 17 different lenders and, um, and get every loan we need. And it goes back to always being nice and doing what you say you're going to do. We got every lender to renew the loans, and it sort of kept us in business. The other thing I think that's significant about Realty Link that was a little bit unorthodox is that during that storm, we never laid off anybody. We had a great team. I may pick up this shovel in a little while, but it's not because of what I did. It's because of a lot of other people behind the scenes and what they do every day. Um, that's how you get to where you are today. It's not just yourself. But um, we, since that time, we borrowed about $500 million. We paid it all back or still servicing the loans that are in place. It was, uh, you know, very fashionable to do strategic workouts and hand properties back to banks and but it wasn't their fault that they loaned us the money that we asked for. And we honored every obligation. We kept our staff. And in 2010, we were standing on third base when the game started back again. And that's when Cole's department store said, go to Pikeville, take a look at this market. It's a little unique. So I did. Drove up here on a Friday, and I think it was snowing like it does most Fridays and Saturdays, Sundays in, in eastern Kentucky. <laughs> Um, spent the weekend, really got to know the town, and, and then, of course, Cole's department store, because of a lot of issues, mainly online sales and coming to grips with online sales, decided they didn't want to do a new store in Pikeville. Still think that's a mistake. What I, what I learned from working this market is that the retailers here have very strong sales, and when you hear the mayor and Donovan talk about a regional center, that's not smoke. That's real. When you have to drive two hours to Johnson City or Lexington to buy, you know, items, then there's a lot of people within that trade area and that can be serviced by Pikeville. And that was the message and the, and the mission on my side is how to pull this project together and get retailers to look at it and understand it and actually get them on a plane to fly somewhere to drive over to Pikeville. And it was a, quite a challenge. And I apologize that it's taken me three years to get my job done. <laughs> but um, we had floodways, flood zones. We had to wrap around the Texas Roadhouse. Had to buy land from the U.S. Postal Service, who I'm not sure would have happened if it hadn't been for Donovan's hard work. Well, I know it wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for Donovan's hard work. Um, so you buy land from the government. You buy land from Walmart. You buy land from the city. You buy a house. You deal with floodways and flood zones, and you try to get retailers to a town the size of Pikeville, you know, it, it takes a while. So, but if we didn't give up, it was a team effort. Um, I do want to thank the city council for always, you know, extending contracts where a lot of city councils would have been very quick to say, this is never going to happen, and let's just move on to somebody else. And I want to thank Mayor Justice for, for his support and his attention, his vision to the community, 
And, I, and, and lastly, I want to thank Donovan, who I agree has become a very good friend working with him. Always willing to do whatever is necessary to advance this project and advance the community. Um, I know that I've called his cell phone many of the evenings, many of Saturdays, uh, talking about where we are, where we need to go, how do we get this thing to the finish line. And um, he was always there, never, never dropped the ball, um, always willing to pitch in. We, we, when we're working with the post office, which is, you know, the government, and it just, it just drug on. And I said, Donovan, this is never going to happen if we can't get them to pick up the pace. Well, he was always quick to pitch in and always made phone calls. And that wouldn't have happened if it hadn't have been for, for Donovan and the mayor and the city council. So I think they deserve a, a real strong round of applause for what they've done. And finally, let's talk about the project because I know that's the, the reason we're all here. And I will tell you from my years of experience, uh, 15, probably 20 years total in development, um, it comes in waves. And you'll just, this is really just the first wave what you'll see in Pikeville. You'll see in within a few years, if the land and opportunity and the right people behind it, you'll see a second wave of development. Because there, it's almost like herding cats. You gotta get them, you know, all moving in the same direction, which is difficult, especially in the economic times that we're in now. But once you get them herded and you get a development started and their sales are good, then the rest will follow. So you'll see, without a doubt, more development follow um, this one. Um, this, this project, um, like I said, started three years ago. We lost Cole's department store, and we said, okay, where do we go from here? Well, not to steal anybody's thunder on who we've lined up because there's another group of development um, tenants, retail tenants, that's, that I can't talk about, but there's probably six or eight that you'll hear about in the next few months. So I think the first thing you got to understand is it's probably about a $40 million project. Um, we'll start construction in, in the next few weeks. Uh, start, you'll start seeing some bulldozers over here grading. You'll see the fire department come down. You'll see a post office, a replacement post office for the distribution center that'll come out of ground first. And then you'll see the retail tenants start that construction right afterwards and the apartments. Um, right at the same timeline. We're fully permitted for the site work. Uh, Rex Rice, who's here today as our project manager, he does a great job. Uh, he'll be on site a lot. Uh, we'll try to use as much local um, subcontractors that we can. We like giving back to the community. We like working with community trust on, on loans. We like working with Shirley Blackburn on the leasing. We, uh, we, we really try to plug ourselves into the community. But with no further ado, if you um, would like to unveil the tenants, we'll just spend a few minutes and talk about each one. Also, I didn't mention it's about 200,000 square feet of retail and about roughly around 200 and some odd thousand square feet of multifamily. Neil's getting ready to talk about this area right here. I can see the smiles on every lady's face. And I see TJ Ma or Marshall's and uh, Ross Department Store and Ulta, they just all get happy. But um, guys, I'm working on the sporting goods store, don't worry, I'm trying to bring one. Um, the lineup that we have so far that I can talk about is Hobby Lobby, which is a 55,000 square foot craft store, you'll love them, great Christian based company out of Oklahoma City. They've done great things for communities, they pay higher than minimum wage. This project creates around a thousand jobs by the time it's finished, not counting the construction jobs that are created, uh, not counting, of course, a pretty large tax base that was now vacant land for the most part and a postal distribution center that pays no property taxes. Well, we got Ross Dress for Less. They're based in San Fran, uh, great retailer, and Marshalls who owns TJ Matt's. Um, 
Marshall's Hobby Lobby, TJ Maxx, Maurice's Ulta, which is 10,000 square feet of cosmetics and beauty and hair products, and, and about 500 square feet of that's dedicated to the men over here, and about 9,500 square feet is dedicated to the ladies. But uh, they're a great retailer. You'll love them. They, uh, they do a great job. And we have Rack Room Shoes. And on top of that, there's going to be a pet store that I can't mention the name. Um, and, a, and a Christian bookstore that I can't mention that name. A, another uh, jewelry store and some more. That probably will come at a later date. But I have really become um, a member of the Pikeville community. It has been a great place to do business. I went to, I got invited to speak at the Dalton, Georgia Chamber of Commerce meeting. And my whole speech that day was based on Pikeville and what a can-do place. And I know they wanted me to talk about Dalton, but I didn't get that attitude in Dalton. So I was just trying to express the, the right kind of attitude and the right kind of place to do business. And I have really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Neil, thank you. As Neil mentioned, one of the things in today's presentation that typically doesn't happen is, is that the retailers are named. Coming out of retail for most of my career, normally they want the store coming out of the ground before they actually do what we're doing. So I certainly appreciate Neil's willingness to go ahead and make the announcement today. On top of that, one of the things that you heard Neil say is this is only part of the lineup. There is still several stores that he's working on that uh, we've signed a confidentiality uh, agreement on that we're aware of some of them. Uh, and then there'll be some additional uh, stores to follow. So I've invited him back uh, here, hopefully within the next month or so, um, to uh, announce the lineup for the remaining stores uh, as well. But this will give you an indication of most of the anchor stores that you will see over up against the back of Walmart. And as he said, the, you know, the unique part of this development is it wraps around one of the city's tenants, which is Texas Roadhouse. So we look forward to Neil coming back and, and making those announcements. Um, before I turn it over, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Commissioner Carter for the closing events, and then after the closing events, we're going to invite the City Commission uh, for the, uh, and uh, the Senator for the official groundbreaking of the uh, displacement of the dirt. Uh, but I also want to make mention before that we leave our uh, partners, Texas Roadhouse, who is, who is a Louisville-based company. I made several trips to Louisville uh, with my good friend uh, Greg May, who uh, had some, uh, some friends uh, in the area that... Um, made some introductions and after numerous meetings of, of attracting them uh, like Neil to the Pikeville market and, and obviously they were very successful bringing their number two store in volume um, into our community. So uh, with our partnership with them, we asked them if they would do us a special favor and open for uh, today for lunch. So typically they're not open until uh, I think four o'clock, uh, but if anybody wants to hang out and have lunch afterwards, they will be open, open for today. Uh, so with all that said, uh, in my closing remarks, again, I appreciate everybody coming out. I'm excited to get this thing out of the ground and would invite Commissioner Carter for a closing remarks. And after that, you're free to either uh, watch the, the dirt slinging or, uh, or to free to head out. So, uh, yeah, maybe that's not the best thing. Dirt slinging with uh, politicians probably wasn't the best choice of words for the day, but I'll own them. Uh, speaking of dirt slinging, Commissioner Jimmy Carter. Thanks, Donovan. You know, a lot's been said today about <clears throat> how much effort has gone into this project, and, you know, and rightly so. You know, as mentioned earlier, this project has been a long time coming, and we've had a lot of naysayers from the get-go that this would never happen, this day would never happen. You know, in the past three-plus years, a lot of people have been working hard behind the scenes to make this a reality. You know, Donovan, along with Neil, have worked tirelessly, I and, mean, you know, we've talked about this all morning, but just don't have any idea that every meeting we would have, Donovan would come in and said, well, we've got a little hiccup. <laughs> we've got a little hiccup. But, you know, we got past it. We've got all through, all through you know, the, the Postal Service working with them, which was, was very difficult. You know, and I, talking to Neil, I'd say, you know, has this been one of the hardest deals you've ever put together in your life? Yes. It, it just about have to be. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine. I haven't got paid yet. Either. And hasn't got paid a penny. So. <laughs> But my hat's off to both of you all, Donovan, Neil, for all your hard work. Um, you know, there's a lot of things being said in our area about being progressive, and I believe sometimes this term is used kind of loosely. Uh, but I really believe the city of Pifel is the most progressive city in the state. You know, why? Because we get the job done. 
we deliver results and we do what we say we're going to do. When it's all said and done, results is, not, is what counts, not empty promises. Again, being progressive is a great quality and a huge responsibility if you taunt yourself as being such. We all should continue to be progressive for the common good, to bring a quality of life to everyone in the city of Pikeville and the region that we deserve. The city continues to be proactive in the downward economy, bringing jobs to our area where we've lost so many. This is a great day for everyone. This will be a great economic boost for the city and our region, and mostly for our housing shortage that we continue to suffer. Again, the city of Pike will always continue to lead the region with its proactive responses to issues that make a difference for the betterment of the people we serve. Thank you.